discussion with Arjuna Mahendran, head of Asian Investment Strategy at HSBC Private Bank. Arjuna, we're just talking about the G20 that we heard from Sarah Eisen. I mean, what do you expect to come out of it and what impact will it have on the market? Well, I think, the, the, first of all, Haslina, the Chinese have deflected the whole issue of the yuan, I think, by uh, unpegging the currency last weekend. So that's, uh, you know, I guess a positive for Asia and for China. But on the other hand, uh, the main agenda is, I think, going to uh, really reflect this uh, debate about whether uh, the uh, Germans and the Europeans should do more to stimulate the global economy. The German uh, economy, as you know, is doing very well. It's an export-led economy, uh, and, and growth is uh, recovering. Uh, and, and I think the American are quite concerned that their reflationary efforts in America, uh, which have really pulled us out of the recession over the last 12 months, have now got to be extended by some uh, assistance from the Germans, who've been very reluctant to do so, and who are continuing to depend on their export uh, engine to drive growth in Germany. So uh, this, I think, is going to be the big issue. And, and the, the, at the backdrop of this is really this issue of uh, high unemployment in the United States, uh, which uh, is really not, uh, the unemployment rate is not coming down fast enough. And it seems that uh, businesses are not hiring aggressively. Uh, some people are still talking about the possibility of a breakup in the Eurozone. Is that a moot point? Well, I mean, I think that's, you know, too much of an internal issue for Europe to become, uh, you know, a main agenda item for the G20 as yet. It could obviously be an issue of concern, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, discussions in the background to try and uh, see that uh, there's some way of resolving this issue. As I see it, the main concern is that the Europeans have got a three-year window in which they have to fix the system. They've got a trillion dollars on the table to featherbed uh, investors in that three-year period. But then thereafter, what happens? Uh, will the Greek debt have to be rescheduled? Is it realistic for the Greek uh, government to bring the deficit down from 14% of GDP to 3% in three years? All those issues, I think, are still not resolved. And uh, yes, I think there will be a lot of discussions on this, though I don't think the G20 really is a forum to address those issues uh, in any meaningful sense. Given the current uncertainty, can we expect the euro to continue to weaken? Well, I think it, uh, I mean, just looking at the technicals in the foreign exchange market, it seems that the euro has found some sort of a near-term bottom. There is obviously a uh, concern uh, that uh, if things continue to deteriorate, particularly if the Germans really cut their deficit uh, vigorously alongside the uh, Spanish and, and other economies in Europe, and you see uh, the demand side of uh, European, the European economy uh, sinking, then we could see further weakness of the euro. I think it's going to be range-bound in the near term, but it's too early really to say which direction this currency is going to take uh, over the next six months. I want to take a look at some of the crosses. The RMB has already appreciated sharply against the euro. How much scope is there for the yuan to appreciate versus the dollar going forward? Well, like I said, uh, Aslinda, you know, there, there have been these studies which suggest that the uh, yuan should not be appreciated too aggressively against the dollar, um, the U.S. being the main export market for uh, China. Uh, that, that clearly could have significant impact on profits in the export sector. I mean, our, our view is that over the next 12 months, you probably won't see more than about 3% on the yuan dollar cross um, in terms of yuan appreciation. Uh, that, I think, you know, is pretty much the line in the sand. And certainly in the, in the short term, I don't expect a very significant move at all. Just one final question before we let you go, Arjuna. What are the chances that China may have to buy even more overseas assets to offset the inflows of hot money? Well, that's uh, a very interesting question. I think uh, we are definitely going to see more of that. Um, it's interesting when you look at the ticks data uh, in the United States, which, uh, which gives you an idea of how much foreign money is flowing into the U.S. Treasury market. Uh, the Chinese, who were net sellers of U.S. Treasuries right until April uh, 2010, have uh, subsequently become significant buyers right. of uh, the U.S. government debt. So I think that suggests that they are definitely buying aggressively uh, maybe things like gold and, and, and foreign assets. Arjuna Mahendran, HSBC Private Bank, we thank you for being with us today.